Good morning, everyone. Um, I hope you're having a wonderful Sunday morning. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Lucy and Amira. Uh, I just graduated from Springfield Township High School, and I've been a member of UDLC and a 1030 regular for my whole life. This morning, I'd like to talk a little bit about my relationship with God, and specifically how he has taught me the value of rest. As part of a family who is very active in the church, I always grew up feeling very grounded in my relationship with God. I saw God in everything that we did, in all of our traditions, from big things like catechism and First Communion to just the smaller daily things like my family's prayer before dinner. All of these traditions were so ingrained in my upbringing that I never felt distant or disconnected from God because it was always like he was right there celebrating with us. I've also always seen God in my friends. I have an incredible group of friends here at UDLC that are more like family than anything else. And I've been through so much with them that I can't help but recognize God in our genuine laughter and grins from ear to ear every time we see each other. But the most important way I've learned to recognize God was a new way this year when I was alone. See, I'm kind of a textbook overachiever, the kind of kid who, this past year, was president of the drama club, actor in and director of shows, builder of sets, member of seven musical ensembles, and just in case I had a few hours to spare in there, student in two AP classes. Now, I don't want to seem at all as if this is a bragging point, and from the bottom of my heart, I do not recommend a schedule like this. But what it meant for me personally was long days, doing all of the things that I loved, working side by side with the people that I loved. But it also meant coming home from school at 10 o'clock p.m. with hours of homework ahead of me. I don't think there's a number big enough to truly represent the number of cups of tea my mom brought, my, brought me to my desk with a worried smile and a don't stay up too late, which always made me laugh. An hour or so later, I'd usually find myself drowning. Two pages into a five-page essay, or on problem number four out of 20, watching my focus dissipate as the day's exhaustion caught up with me, and I usually had to fight a sense of hopelessness. Logically, there was no way I'd be able to finish in time, I'd tell myself, and even if I did, the product would be so bad that there was no point in continuing. This was usually the point where I'd shut my computer and close my eyes. Not to give in to exhaustion, but to open myself up for help. And night after night, I found that my silent and sometimes accidental prayers were always answered. With a deep breath in, I'd feel myself gather all my doubts and hopelessness and worry, and with a deep breath out, I'd feel them flood out of my body. It was like someone was there, breathing some strength back into me and guiding my mind back to the task at hand. Matthew chapter 11, verses 28 through 30 reads, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. This idea that God brings rest to the weary and that all burdens are easier with him is something that I found true in practice, which is what made the sentiment all the more important and meaningful to me. God was with me in my hopelessness and my struggle. As long as I reminded myself to be centered in him and allowed him to help me focus and to give me strength, I was always okay. In this difficult, socially distant time when, even as things are beginning to open back up, our continued caution reminds us of how much we miss normalcy. I'm reminded of those lonely nights, feeling stretched to my limit and like all of the tasks ahead of me were beyond impossible. But no matter how hopeless or exhausted we feel, we must all take a moment to breathe and to admit that we need help and to allow God to provide it. My favorite technique is to close your eyes and breathe in for four seconds and out for four seconds, which I invite you to join me in now if you would like to. In, out. In every moment of hopelessness and dismay, a pause and a focused, calming breath gives God the opportunity to hold us up and to give us the strength we need to carry on. I found that as long as I trust in him and trust in myself, there is no challenge that I can't meet. Thank you.
Amen.